guess what? I got a Discord server. If you play video games, any any kind of video game, from MMORPGs to arena games to anything, you came across the term pay to win. And pay to win has always been a topic of discussion among big content creators, gaming communities, or anything that has to do with gaming, as soon as pay to win gets mentioned, arguments and discussion just break out. And it got to a point now where I just, I honestly, I cannot take it anymore. The conversation of what is pay to win or if a game is pay to win, in my eyes, is one of the dumbest and most useless conversations one can have. And that's the reason I'm making this video, because I'm just sick of it. I'm sick and tired of having to argue with different types of people that have different opinions of what pay to win is, or if a game is pay to win. There is no clear understanding among the gamer community of what pay-to-win actually is or what can be considered pay-to-win. I spend way too many hours on forums, chat rooms, Discord servers talking to people about this is pay-to-win, this is not pay-to-win. And it got to a point now where I, I literally, as soon as somebody starts talking about pay to win, I just instantly just, just leave the chat room, close Discord, or, or just try to get away from it. Because in my eyes, it's just pure stupidity at this point in 2022 that we have to have a conversation or even an argument about if a game is pay to win or not. So, to make my life way more easier, I decided to make a video so each time somebody wants to come and argue with me about if a game is pay to win or not, I can just link them the video and leave. So that's what we're doing today. This is my final word on what is pay to win. And if you don't agree with it, then honestly, I do not care. Then go somewhere else, talk to somebody that wants to talk to you about it because I really do not. Because pay to win has been abused by so many studios claiming that games are not pay to win when in truth they are pay to win. At this point, it's a term used by publishers and, and marketing departments to lure in gaming gamers and gaming communities to make an extra buck. So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. For the last time, I'm going to talk about pay to win in this video. I will never talk about this subject ever again because I honestly have better things to do with my time than talk about this particular subject. So, to make this easier to understand, as you can see, I went out of my way and I tried to break this down in the most easiest to understand way for anybody to understand. All right, I'm going to go through what is pay to win, what's the definition of it, where lies the issue and what would be the right definition of what pay to win is. Again, if you disagree with this, I do not care. There is a fault in your logic if you would not agree with what I am about to explain. It is literally one of the easiest things to understand when it comes to gaming. And I'm going to try my best to make this as clear as possible. So, yeah, let's get started. So, first up, the question, what is pay to win? 
really? Right? That's 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 the overall that's the that's the question. What is pay to win? And and sadly, in that question is also where the issue lies. Right? The issue is that too many players have different opinions of what pay to win is. Every time you go and talk to somebody, everybody has a different opinion of what pay to win is, right? Too many players see pay to win only in too many different situations. There are some players that see pay to win only if it's related to PvP or if you can level boost or anything of that nature. There's too many different players thinking that pay to win only applies in certain situations. Too many different situations, right? And then when you go and, and talk even further with them, it comes down to too many players only see the relevance of pay to win for a certain play style. Because there's too many different types of players. PvE players see only the relevance of pay to win in PvE. PvP players only see the relevance for pay to win in PvP. The overall issue just is there's too many different opinions. Even though there should not be too many different opinions. So if you take these three things in consideration, right? The main problem is there is no real definition of what pay to win is. Anything in this world that we use on, on a daily basis, like a spoon, a fork, a knife, has a clear definition, right? There's a definition of what a knife is. There's a definition of what a sword is, right? I went out of my way and I looked all over the internet to find a place, to find some sort of quote that would make pay to win as clear as possible. The only two places that I found, for one, was Wikipedia. I know Wikipedia is not really the best source of reference, but let me read you this from Wikipedia. In some games, players who are willing to pay for special items, downloadable content, or to skip cooldown timers may be able to gain an advantage over those playing for free, who might otherwise never be able to access said items. Such games are called pay to win. By critics. In general, a game is considered pay to win when a player can gain any gameplay advantage over their non playing peers. From this part, from this definition from Wikipedia, take away two things. It is not stated only for PvE games, only for PvP games. It's not stated for any sort of scenario. The only thing that you can really take away from this is the, is the word advantage. So advantage, what's, what's an advantage, right? Again, we're coming back to the same issue. What's an advantage, really? Too many players, too many different opinions. Right? Want to go down here. The other somewhat often used definition of what pay to win is, I got from the Urban Dictionary. I, I agree, this is not really a, a good source to use but i want to read you this because this has been stated to me so many times games that let you buy better gear or allow you to take or, or uh, excuse me gear or allow you to make better items than everyone else at a faster rate than make then makes the game largely unbalanced even for people who have skill in the game without paying in this part it is mostly talking about um, items, but not really about advantage. Right? They, they, they reference skill, but it's, it's not something that clearly states this is pay to win. It describes a situation, it describes a scenario of what people, some people see as pay to win, others may not. So the overall issue is, which I call the car issue, you cannot find a complete explanation of what pay to win is on wikipedia it's not complete because too many people say the wikipedia entry is wrong other people say the urban dictionary entry is wrong and and the issue 
from my point of perspective is, if you go anywhere in the world and you describe a car, everybody exactly knows what you're talking about. A a an infant, a five-year-old, somebody that lives in the middle of nowhere, if you describe a car to them, they instantly know what a car is. This is not the case with pay to win. If you go anywhere on any forum or you start a conversation anywhere online about pay to win, you're going to run into 15 different people that have 15 different opinions. So what is, the, what is the right definition? What would be a definition that is so bulletproof that you cannot argue against it? Well, first up, pay to win is a horrible name. Whoever came up with the term pay to win, horrible, horrible uh, choice of words. Because you cannot buy wins. You don't buy wins. What you buy is an advantage. Right? An advantage. And now comes the point where a lot of the arguments and discussions start. Because a lot of people say, yeah, you might get an advantage, but, you know, if I'm more skillful than you, then I can, you know, I can beat your advantage. That might be the case on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but that still gives the other player an advantage. If he uses the advantage to its fullest or if he screws it up, that's up to the individual player. Nevertheless, he, for paying real-life money, has an advantage. I always give this example, right? I always give the inventory slot example because this is, for me, by far the simplest way to explain pay to win. Because a lot of people say inventory slots are not pay to win. Here's how, here's how I counter argue that whole train of thought. You take two players, you take two players or bots, all right? For seven days, they do the exact same thing. The exact same thing. They, they kill the same mobs. They do the same quests. They, they farm the same amount of stuff. One used real life money to buy more inventory slots. The other one does not. So now both players, or both bots, both, both scenarios, each goes out and just, I don't know, cuts down trees. The one that paid for extra inventory slots can stay out in the world longer and far more, while the other one has to run back to town to put whatever he farmed into his bank. So the first one with the extra inventory slots is farming more efficient. He's saving time. At the end of the seven days, the one that had more inventory slots will have more resources in his bank or in his inventory. So he bought himself an advantage by saving time. Right? Now, no, anywhere you go on the internet, I dare you, right? It never says anything about pay to win to be PvP or PvE exclusive. Planet Side 2, pay to win. The, the tree farming, the tree farming scenario that I just gave, which is PvE and Planet Side 2 being P to, uh, PvP, they both are pay to win. You both, in both cases, with real life cash, you can buy yourself an advantage over your other players. If it's a small advantage, if it's a big advantage, it, do it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If a skillful player, the best player on your server, uses pay to win, he buys him himself an advantage that is even bigger than anything anybody else can buy because his skill is getting added on top. But nonetheless, even if the biggest noob on your server buys himself anything with real-life cash, like inventory slots or weapon or XP boosts, he buys himself an advantage over his peers. So what do you get? Exactly. What, what is it do you get for, for using real life cash. I just explained it. You get an advantage. An advantage is the key word here. There is no way around it. There is no arguing about it. 
anything that you buy in one way or another is an advantage. Inventory slots, character slots, XP boosts. Um, I don't know what else is out there. Extra, extra dungeon runs. It's all an advantage over people that do not pay real life cash. So yeah, what is an advantage, right? This right here, anything that has an impact on any in-game mechanic would be the best definition of something that is pay to win. I want to give an example. Cosmetic items that don't impact any in-game mechanic is, is not pay to win. You just look differently. If a cosmetic item now would have stats like you farm faster, you buy yourself an advantage. Now it's a different story. I want to give another example. Like Desert Online, the ghillie suit. Covered up and hit your real life name. That's an impact on an in game mechanic. That is a pay to win item. If the ghillie suit, by its nature, would be easy to spot, wouldn't be pay to win if it wouldn't have any stats or anything on it. But anything that you can buy with real life cash is pay to win. Anything that has any impact on any in game mechanic is pay to win. Or how I would like to call it, pay for advantage. That's the that's the issue. I just gave the issue. Sorry, I'm going like I rehearsed this a little bit, so I'm going a little bit ahead. But the issue is that's the issue. Anything that you can buy that has an impact on any in-game mechanic that gives you an advantage is pay to win. Even if it's a tiny itty bitty advantage, it's still an advantage. So following that train of thought. Black Desert Online is one really good example for pay to win. Can skill make up for it? I want to I want to kind of go into this now. Can skill make up for an advantage that people would get for paying real life cash? I call this the cancer example. Yes, maybe. A single player may be able, based on his skill, to make up for not buying pay to win items. But here's the thing you cannot generalize what a single player can do compared to the rest of the player base. For example, if somebody beats cancer, is, pan is cancer now no longer a life threatening disease? No, it's still a really sucky disease. And that's, again, back to the issue. Too many players have different opinions. People say that can, if you have skill, you can make up for it. You might be able to do so. But how many people in a game can make up for not buying an advantage with real life cash? People try to generalize this, but they never can support their argument. And what if a player, a single player, that can make up for not paying um, for any advantage with real life cash, now starts buying an advantage with real life cash. It goes in circles. It is still an advantage. An advantage is an advantage. Doesn't matter who buys it. Doesn't matter if it's big or small. An advantage remains an advantage. No, not every player, not every single player. You cannot generalize in skill and all that stuff based on a single player. You, if you would, I don't know, have the stat of every person in a game and with what they spend and so on and so on, you might be able to support an argument, but nobody has that information, so you cannot use it. You cannot generalize this issue. You can because, you know, it gives you somewhat of a counter-argument that is easily you know, taken apart, but again, too many people have different opinions and most people think their opinion is right. Well, while in reality, their opinion is the nearest thing to a dumpster fire I've seen in years. The cancer example I just gave. Again, yes, one single player might be able to beat cancer 
But cancer remains cancer. An advantage remains an advantage. Doesn't matter who uses it or who doesn't. Person was still. Sorry, I'm going like way, way ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, again, a person with skill can buy an advantage. It doesn't matter if it's a good, if it's one without skill, with skill, it doesn't matter. An advantage remains an advantage. And that brings us to the issue that, again, too many players have different opinions and everybody thinks they're right and everybody most of the time is wrong because the, our definition or my definition is pretty simple. Anything that has an impact on any in-game mechanic. If it's an advantage and, you can, and it has an impact on any in-game mechanic, it is an advantage. There is nothing really you can counter-argue that with. For example, the thing, I, the, the thing I just gave, the example from earlier, it, it's, you can apply this to any situation, to any type of, um, of, of game there is. Right? If, you take, if you take, I don't know, Warzone at some point where you were able to buy a red dot site in the store, people call that pay to win. In generally, that dot site made aiming a little bit easier for some people. And it did have the impact on the in-game mechanic that is aiming down site. So, yes, you could argue this is pay to win, but you could also argue that this is um, not pay to win. But the fact is, it changed something in game. It changed your crosshair while aiming down sight. So it had an impact on an in game mechanic. So, based on our definition, yes, it was pay to win. And yeah, it was. A lot of people did not like that. So, what I want to do now is I want to go through three examples. Three examples in regards to situations that I came across where people. We're arguing so hard about what pay to win is and what not is. And I'm going to mostly use um, MMORPGs as a reference. I'm going to use the example of MMORPGs. Um, so the first one I want to talk about um, is Ashes of Creation. Right? So in Ashes of Creation, you have something called Head Start servers. Head Start servers are servers people could buy into that are being taken live for all the other servers on, 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 when, on release day. So people say this is pay to win. Well, I say it is not. And I will explain this now. So try, please, please, try your best to follow my train of thought. In Ashes of Creation, you have two types of servers. Head Start servers and non-Head Start servers. Head Start servers are for people that bought into Kickstarter and that have access to these servers. And even though these servers are mostly frozen in time, you won't be able to do anything really on the servers. It allows people to level up a little bit before everybody else gets on the server. But you also have non-Head Start servers. Non-Head Start servers go live on a certain day and everybody starts at the same time. So now people say Head Start servers are pay to win. Well, I say no, they're not. They're simply not. And if I have to explain this to you, if, you, if you're not getting this by now, then please stop playing video games because any thought of logic is lost on you. I want to give another example. Lost Ark. You only have one type of server. Normal servers that I don't remember, but I, let's just assume the normal servers had a head start option. And people on those servers that had access to Head Start started, started uh, before everybody else, and then the servers went live for everybody else. So the main difference here is the main difference. In Ashes of Creation, you have two types of servers that you can choose from, while in other games like Lost Ark, you only have normal servers. Again, I just chose Lost Ark. I don't know if this is the case. It's just, you can call it any other... MMORPG. You can call it whatever you want. Right? So where's the difference here? Where is the difference? It's simple. 
right here with Ashes of Creation, you have a choice. You can either accept the disadvantage from starting at a Head Start server, or you say, no, screw this. I want to start on a non Head Start, ser uh, Head Start server and have the, the same uh, advantage, uh, the same chance as everybody else. You have a choice here, while with the other MMORPGs, you do not. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Because here, you're getting forced to play with a disadvantage compared to the people that had the head start. In Ashes of Creation, or in the case of Ashes of Creation, you have a choice. You can either decide, I want to deal with the disadvantage for a little bit, or I don't want to deal with the disadvantage for a little bit. If you're just somebody that, that plays or starts playing like everybody else on release day. So there's a clear difference here. While in any other MMORPG, the purchase of Head Start is pay to win because you buy yourself an advantage compared to everybody else that starts like everybody else on launch day. In Edge of Creation's case, this is not the case. You can no longer buy Head Start and you get a choice. So the choice makes the difference. And if you think this is still making it pay to win, then I'm sorry, then please uninstall everything you have in your computer and I don't know, go to the library. The second example, loot pets, right? Time spent, same as three example. Some people say, oh yeah, loot pets are not pay to win. They do a job for you. Even if it's a couple milliseconds, half a second. If you don't have to loot your mobs or whatever, you're saving time. Time adds up. You have a time advantage over people that loot for themselves they don't have loot pets so time is the key factor here all right the same thing and this is now this is something this is one where i actually had to really really dig deep and try to make this as, as clear as possible so some people say that character slots are not pay to win right and i say well they are pay to win Depending on the situation. If you're just a casual, if you're just a normal, it doesn't really matter to you. Right? But like I said earlier, we should not generalize this based on the opinions or situations different types of players run into. Right? You have to keep this as simple as possible. So, to make this a little bit more clearer for the viewers, you have a situation. You got an MMORPG with eight classes. You got two types of players. One has five character slots. The other one has eight slots, right? So one guy has to choose five from eight, but the other one can have a, all eight classes. Now something comes along, a nerf. Five classes get nerfed, right? There's a new patch with a new raid, right? And both players want to go for world first. Right? And five classes get nerfed. Now, sadly, the guy who had only five characters was unlucky and all of his five characters got nerfed. But the other guy who had the eight characters has three viable characters that he can now use to go into the new patch. So the advantage is that you are more prepared for what is coming. This is the key point, right? The guy had the advantage of being able to choose from a variety of classes while the other guy had to deal with the five choices he'd had. If he would have had eight, cho eight character slots and eight classes, that would not have been the case. So, again, back to the definition that in my eyes is the most logical and best way to explain what pay to win is anything that has any impact on any in-game mechanic is pay to win and if you don't disagree with it me that is okay most people don't agree with you know stuff other people say but like i said i don't care this video is mostly for personal use because at the end of the day, even if a game states it's not pay to win, it's your game. It's what you make out of it, right? You might be okay with, yeah, hey, yeah, this is pay to win, but not so bad, so I'm okay with it. Or you might be, no, this is so pay to win, I don't want to play with it. 
It's up to you to decide if this is okay for you or not, because this is not going to change. This is not going to change anytime soon. People are still going to call games pay to win. Other people may not. There were so many content creators saying the Lost Ark, for example, is not pay to win. And I'm just here shaking my head and just face palming myself because the level of stupidity that is within the gamer community in regards to the subject is so big that I'm really ashamed nowadays to call myself a gamer. Pay to win, greed, and the stupidity of us gamers had brought, brought the gaming industry and the current state of gaming to a point where it's just like, are we really that stupid? Do we really let these people get away with it? Do we really believe content creators that are clearly getting paid to promote a game that and say this is not pay to win? Do we do we really allow that? The, the sad answer is yes, we do. Because gamers in general are stupid. Imagine all the big content creators from Asmongold to Lazy Peon to Shroud to Tim the Tatman. Imagine them all saying, enough is enough. I will no longer play pay-to-win games. Imagine that would happen. Imagine how fast the industry would change. So, but that's just me dreaming. So, if anything... If you can take anything from this video away, don't call it pay to win. Call it pay for an advantage. Trust me, it will make your life so much easier and you will avoid so many dumb conversations. I'm looking at you, Ashes of Creation Discord. You got some real brainiacs on that one. But yeah, this is my definition of what pay to win is. And if you ask me, it's the only right one. Later.